Yo, YouTube was good, man. It's Gary with the Fan TV, man. Back at you on the video, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos, man. Let's get into it, right? So, man, this Ravens all season continues to be interesting. Continues to uh, surprise at every turn. Uh, continues to be an offseason where fans are um, have no faith in the front office, have no trust in the front office. And the things with Lamar Jackson are just getting stranger and stranger. I mean, um, I put out a community post yesterday talking about the Ken Francis thing. We'll, we'll talk about that, right? But as far as the Ravens go, right? And the big thing this offseason was to fix the wide receiver position. Now, as of right now, the wide receiver room is just as, as it was as the season ended. Now, the reason that that's the issue is because you're looking to, the way this is playing out, you're saying that you're going to fix it in the draft, which means you're going to rely on rookies again. When you could have had veterans out here that you could have caught and gain, um, put into the building, right? So, Brandon Cooks goes for a, a mid-round pick, yeah? He had, a, he, had, yes, he has a big salary. The Texas is going to eat some of that. You can make it work, all right? Um, Elijah Moore gets traded to the Cleveland Browns inside the division, okay? Now, I said Elijah Moore's the greatest receiver in the world. Now, he did go for a high second-round pick. I, I feel like he could have went for a third-round pick, though, if, you know, the Browns and the Jets, you know, exchange, you know, some picks back and forth. So it makes that deal a little bit easier to understand for a second round pick. But if it was just a larger, more straightforward pick, it probably could have been a third round pick, honestly. So you got you got that situation right there, right? Young receiver available after they signed Miko Harp, and it's obvious that they, they couldn't get all of these guys in the building. You know, Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, and Miko Harman, they're expected to sign Odell Beckham. Elijah Moore has been the odd man out since mid-season last, you know, since this last season, okay? Um, nothing happens there, all right? Um, the Browns get a new wide receiver. Now they got Amari Cooper. Now they got um, Elijah Moore right there, all right? Now this is he's a guy who couldn't help the Ravens. Nice slot receiver. One of his great routes could have been effective, could have been used here, right? Could have been a great player that Tom Muck could use in space. That doesn't happen. Instead, we hear about visits for Nelson Aguilar. Now, Nelson Aguilar fits, only the description he fits for what the Ravens are looking for this offseason is, he's a veteran. That's it. Besides that, I don't want Nelson Aguilar in the building. Why? Why is he coming into the building? Now, listen, visits are just visits. They're just that. You know, it doesn't mean somebody's getting signed. It doesn't mean somebody that uh, a deal is imminent, right? The Ravens had a visit with, uh, I believe, what Rocky Sin with last week, and they obviously didn't sign him. So, you know, it is what it is. It happens. But it's just a strange way how... Eric DeCosta, you can say repeatedly over and over and over again. I'm a, we're going to fix this wide receiver room. This ain't the way to do it, man. This ain't the way to do it. Nelson Aguilar is not the way to do it. And drafting the first round rookie is not. It, it, now, listen, if you draft the first round rookie in addition to a veteran wide receiver, I'm all for it. But just saying we're going to draft two rookies and have Bateman and two rookies as our wide receiver room, listen, they can be very talented, very explosive, but they still got to learn the NFL game. They still going to need a veteran in their ear. So why not get a veteran that can actually play, right? Um, DeAndre Hopkins is still available. You know, now the rumors is that the Bills are going after him. So now the Bills are willing to put it on the line to get um, DeAndre Hopkins and still have Stephon Diggs on the other side of the field. Come on, man. But listen, the the uh, I believe the Cardinals won a second round pick for DeAndre Hopkins. They're not going to get that. After all of the trades that we've seen this offseason, it's becoming increasingly more likely that DeAndre Hawks will go for a fourth, fifth round pick, maybe, at the, at, at the highest. But he's going somewhere between three and five. That's that's the complete honest truth right there. And you won't pull the trigger on that. Now, listen, the Cardinals in any trade will probably eat some of DeAndre Hawkins' salary. So I don't want to hear about all he, he makes too much money. And all these trades is a give and take. The Cardinals want to offload them. A team wants them. So they will make it work out. Simple as that, right? Um, and then, you know, I hear they they, they bring in Adrian Amos for a visit. Now, listen, no respect, no disrespect to Amos. You know, he is a uh, he's a big he's a big time Baltimore high school player. So I uh, believe when he went to Calvert Hall, you know, I got friends that know him. So that's that's cool. If he was to be a Raven, that's that's awesome, bro. Like the play for your hometown team, that's dope. Like, don't get me wrong about that at all. But I get the Raven chair, Chuck Clark. But you sign back Geno Stone. Attacking the safety position really isn't what you need to be focusing on right now. It's bigger needs right now. And listen, you're going to say to me, uh, well, Lamar Jackson's contract is doing this. It's not. It's not. It, it really isn't. The Ravens have restructured deals in their back pocket that they could use. They can restructure Marlowe again. They can restructure uh, Andrews again. They probably can restructure Ryan Stanley again. They have, they have deals in their back pocket that they could use. They're not using it just right now because they don't want to have – 
a whole bunch of cash space for no reason and they're not signing anybody. All right. So it's not just a simple fact that oh, well, Lamar is taking up this amount of the cash space. Like, no, they didn't have deals in their back pocket that they could use. They're just not using them at the moment. And look, when I look at these free agent options as far as wide receiver goes, there's really only one free agent wide receiver right now who you could sign that can make an impact for the Ravens next season. And that's DJ Chark. That's that's really it. After Miko's off the board, if Odell is really going to be a New York Jet, now listen, nothing is confirmed about that, but that's what the reports are saying. All right, I'm just going to throw it out there that he is expected to sign with the New York Jets. That's what they're saying. So if the New York Jets get Odell Beckham, you're really only left with DJ Chark as a free agent option. You know, before the Jets signed Miko Harmon, I was I didn't even want Miko Harmon, but I was looking at it like, hey, the Ravens might be able to use him. Speed guy, he wants to prove himself as a wide receiver, he got a chip on the shoulder. That could work out. He signed him to a one year deal. And that's another thing I'm noticing this option too. It's not like these wide receiver contracts aren't like last season, last offseason. The deals aren't ginormous, they aren't crazy. You can make something happen in this uh, offseason when it comes to the wide receiver position. And then, uh, besides DJ Chark and besides trading for DeAndre Hopkins, there are the Broncos wide receivers who are uh, uh, available, I guess you could say, right? Jerry Judy, right now, they're saying that asking price is too high, but the way other teams are uh, moving and making trades, I would assume that asking price goes down to maybe a third round pick with Jerry Judy. You could probably get Cole and Sutton for the same pick. So, listen. I get Eric DeCosta, you love your draft picks. You only got five this year. But you need to attack the wide receiver room. Attack it. Attack it like you do everything else. If you had the opportunity, right, the Ravens were reportedly the team that was in on Darius Slay. If the Ravens had the chance and the opportunity to get Darius Slay and snatch it up in an instant, right, that if the Eagles didn't resign him, he's going to come to Baltimore. A 31-year-old, 32-year-old corner. Still a good corner. Still an elite corner. Don't get me wrong about that statement. The Ravens need to solve the cornerback room as well. But you got a bigger issue here on the wide receiver. So if you could go out and get Darius Slade, you could go out and bring in DJ Chark. He's not going to cost nearly as much. Not nearly as much. So this is about twitches. This is about decisions, right? And don't get me wrong. like It's not just the Ravens side. The Lamar Jackson side is very, very weird. And it's very, very strange as well. This Ken Francis thing is weird. Um... <laughs> Maybe it was all a bargain employee, but to say that there was a guy that was contacted teams on Lamar Jackson's behalf, a quote-unquote family friend, then for an official NFL memo to come out saying that this guy's name is Ken Francis and that he is the owner of a uh, a home gym, right? That's his product, you know? So that comes out, and then Lamar Jackson said that he never tried to negotiate for me, and then less than 10 minutes later, Lamar Jackson drops the advertisement for the entire gym, which is the name of their product between um, his business partner, as he called him, Ken Francis and Lamar Jackson. So that's their product, the entire gym. Um, but listen, I will say this for the first, first time. As I said before, Lamar Jackson has endorsement deals. He doesn't have maybe the traditional what you would expect Lamar Jackson to have, but he's not sitting on his hands doing nothing with his money. All right, He's, he's investing in different things. Uh, to me, personally, I know I don't get people care about that so much. You know, he could do what he wants with his money. Uh, I'm happy to see that he's doing something with it. Cool, that's great. Uh, all of it is just very weird. It's all just a very, very strange situation, all right? Um, if you're going to have somebody who was not a licensed NFOPA person to contact teams, because listen, he contacted teams. It, it, it happened, all right? Did he? He might not. He might not try to negotiate a contract, but maybe he was trying to drum up interest as they the terms that they're using, all right? He contacted somebody. Okay, the NFL not gonna send out the memo just because um, they want to. They they don't want to do that. They they send it out because it happened. He was the contact the team. So if you're gonna ask somebody to contact teams on your behalf, just get an agent. And listen, I don't think Lamar Jackson needs an agent. Trust me, I really don't. But if you're gonna ask somebody to contact teams on your behalf, then just get an agent to do that. Because at this point, it's your negotiation, right? If you see a team that you're interested in, hey, you see the Colts look interesting, you see the Vikings look interesting, Titans, whoever, contact them and start the negotiation process if you feel like it's slow right now, right? Uh, because other than that, it doesn't make any sense to not sign sign the Ravens deal, right? Lamar Jackson doesn't need to play on the franchise tag this year. He can if he wants to. He's, he can obviously do whatever he wants. And um, I'm a big proponent of Lamar Jackson uh, being doing what he does as a businessman. 
right? If he wants to ride it out, he can. I would support that decision 100%, right? I'm just saying this, right? If the Ravens offered you, if the Ravens can fix the clause and say it's $175 million guaranteed, $180 million guaranteed, no injuries, no ifs, ands, or buts in it, that's a good deal. That seems to be the best deal in the market, and it will be the top quarterback deal that was signed. You get three years between 160 and 180. You're good. You hit the market again at 29, another contract, boom. 32, another contract. You could be out the league. You could be out the league by then. 32, 33 years old. If you want to get another one, get 35. You could be done with it, right? So I feel like the only thing I feel about this Lamar Jackson is the fact is this, right? Is that he's extending his clock to get paid. That's the only thing about it, you know what I mean? Um, you know, he's 26 years old. He wastes another season, he'll be 27. He's not probably going to want to sign a full five-year deal at that 27 because he wasn't want, he's going to want to hit the market again when he's still in his promise, right? So that's the only thing about it. He can do whatever he wants. He can take his time with it. You know, I, I don't think he's handling it um, poorly as far as the negotiation side of it. But this Ken Francis thing was very, very strange. If it was all just a market employee to get the drum up interest in the entire gym, then well done. Honestly, if that, that was the entire reason you did it, well done. But um, if he was contacting on your behalf and he's not a certified agent, it's weird. It just doesn't make it just doesn't, doesn't make much sense to do in that aspect. So his famous offense, uh, uh, not offense, sorry. His famous offseason is one of the strangest things I've really seen since being a Ravens fan. Um, from the offensive side of the ball, how they're how they're treating, how they're approaching free agency. Um, I like some of the things Ravens did as far as who they resigned, but. It's not enough as far as attacking the offense and getting weapons for Lamar Jackson to play with if he was to come back here. And Lamar Jackson with this other side with the Ken Francis thing is very, very weird. So I don't know, man. Uh, something will probably happen today that will make this Ravens offseason even, even more strange, even weirder. But, uh, hey, I'm back. You know, we'll talk about it if something does happen. And I'm going to get out of here, man. You know, so listen, if you stick to this point in the video, consider hitting that subscribe button, man. Uh, I love doing these videos. So... Um, like I said, go ahead and subscribe, man. But it's Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. I'm out.